I didn't get a chance to watch this week's episode of AW Dynamite to just this afternoon. But man, did it not disappoint. And I can't wait to talk to you guys about it on this episode of Fire, Mid, or Trash. Let's go. How you guys doing out there today? This is the episode of Fire Mid or Trash for AEW 510-23, and we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. All right, the first match of the night was Ray Phoenix versus Claudio Castagnoli, and that match was fire. First of all, you got Ray Phoenix. You got Claudio. I mean, this is one thing that's become real consistent with AEW, as far as the matches, if we took everything else away, the the backstage segments, the promos, the goofy stables, AEW will be fire every week, except except Rampage. Rampage will probably never be fire. And Newsflash, they advertise this Friday's Rampage. Yeah, it's going to be one of the worst episodes. I'm calling that right now. But, um... Yes, if we're just basing it strictly on matches, AEW is going to be fire nine out of ten times. But anyway, just to get in this match, Ray Phoenix, Claudio Castagnoli, it was a perfect match for classing and conflicting styles. You got one guy, he's a luchador, he's a high flyer, he's doing all these spots. Then you got Claudio, he's a technician, he's strong as shit. Like he's like one of the, he's legit. Like company to company, one of the strongest guys there. So you know you're going to get that. Uh, I will say this, throwing this little tidbit, Claudio just does not seem like a natural fit to um, the Blackpool Combat Club. I don't know if it's because I'm too much of a damn fan and know how nice the guy is from what I hear or what, but he just doesn't feel like a natural fit to the Blackpool Combat Club to me. He kind of just sticks out like a sore thumb, dude. Um, But as I expected, great match. Ray Phoenix, Claudio Castanoli. And once again, my verdict for this match is fire. All right. Next, we had a segment with FTR, Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and Mark Briscoe. And I can't reiterate it enough. I'm so sick and tired of this shit. I'm sick and tired of the goofy stables in AEW. Like, especially, I don't even know what you call these guys. Whatever this group with Sonya Dutt is, like, I, I hate it. I hate it. None of these guys match. You got a giant there that doesn't do shit. I, I don't know what else I could really say about it. You got Sonya Dutt. He's effing annoying. You got the giant, useless. Jay Lethal is cold, being held back. Jeff Jarrett, begrudgingly, I will say he's a legend, begrudgingly, but... He is one. Uh, I wish Jeff Jarrett was all the way over here and Jay Lethal was all the way over here and they weren't together because, you know what, it's annoying. Um, anyway, the segment, if you haven't figured it out already, was trash. Okay, so then we got the segment backstage with Roderick Strong and Chris Jericho. It's mid. Um, first of all, I don't know how much sense. They basically both had a piece of paper that had a big ass AEW logo on it. And I guess both of them were like supposed to be posing as legal documents. Trust me, as somebody who's actually worked in a courthouse before, I can tell you right now that that's not what a legal document looks like. I'll tell you right now, it's not what a legal document looks like. It was basically a blank piece of paper with the AEW logo on it. Come on, guys. Like, you could have did a little bit better than that. You could at least got a legal document template to show that basically uh, it's a restraining order, or whatever the hell they were trying to put forth. But anyway, this is mad because Chris Jericho is always going to light the scene up and, and be entertaining whenever he steps on the mic. Roger Strong, he's as boring as a bucket of sand, but he's on the screen with Chris Jericho, so this is mad. Then we had um, Dave Garcia and Orange Cassidy. Speaking of buckets of sand, Dane Garcia 
hang it up. Like as far as like, oh, I'm a sports entertainer, just drop it. Um, it's way easier to pass you off as a wrestler. But I guess that's the gimmick, right? The gimmick is he's clearly a wrestler and he's trying to force himself to be a sports entertainer. I feel like they were on the right track like a couple months ago when it was Daniel Bryan trying to bring him over to the wrestler side and um, Chris Jericho trying to bring him over to the sports entertainer side. And as far as I'm concerned, they dropped the ball because if you're just going to turn Daniel Bryan and have him be um, a part of this ruthless version of the Blackpool Combat Club, I think that group would be a lot better, a lot better fit for Daniel Garcia than the Jericho Appreciation Society, which is another stable that just needs to get clipped. Um, anyway, um, like I said, great match. I, oh yeah, by the way, the match is fire. I forgot to say that. Uh, the match is fire. Orange Cassidy has been on fire. Orange Cassidy has been like a straight up. He's been a dog lately. He's been a straight up dog lately. Like I don't know how else to, how else to put it. He's been a dog, and so this match is fire. Um, dang, dang, please cut off the sports entertainer BS. So then we had a Christian Cage segment, and let me tell you this: I don't know what's happened to Christian between WWE and AEW. And WWE. Christian was just like a classic whining crybaby. All he needed was one more shot, one more shot. He was just a crybaby. Then he retired. I don't know if he became a grumpy old man or what. He goes over to AEW. Now he's like one of the biggest dickheads that you could ever possibly imagine. Um, he said that he always bring, makes it personal. He brings family into it, talks about people's father, whether they're deceased or alive. Um but man, the Christian going look. This segment was fire. I'm sorry. As big of an asshole as Christian is, this this segment was fire. He went in on Arn Anderson, man. He went in. He went in on that dude. Sorry about that, guys. He went in on that dude. He basically pulled the Dominic Mysterio on Arn Anderson and technically called him a dad beat dad. Basically told him like, hey man, you don't believe in your son. Your son's trash. So you went to go fire Wardlow, and now he's your new son. And I don't know if this is going to spit out. Look, I could honestly see a scenario where Brock Anderson costs Wardlow the TNT title and aligns himself with Christian and Luchasaurus. I mean, before it gets to the point where Luchasaurus turns on Christian because Christian is trying to basically treat him the way MJF treated uh, Wardlow. Um, but yeah, and Christian pissed off. Detroit. Um, I'm from Chicago. I'm a Bears fan and, and a Bulls fan. I'm 100% pro piss off Detroit. But, man, yeah, Christian had that crowd hot. They were treating him like, again, Dominic Mysterio. They didn't even want to let the guy talk. But Christian is a great A veteran and a legend and a Hall of Famer. And Christian wasn't about to let the crowd, like, keep him from finishing his promo. That's what he wasn't going to do. Then we had Anna J and Julia Hart. I'm on record. I like Anna J. And you know what? I'm trying to separate <laughs> how Anna J looks versus how she wrestles. I think Anna J is a decent wrestler. And hey, before you say, oh, you scumbag, you're talking about her looks. Well, Anna J is the one to advertise it. What does she say? She says she has a, a fat ass and a bad attitude. She said that, not me. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh She's a decent, she's a decent wrestler, and I honestly do see her getting better week to week. I really need her to cut the whole Anna J A S out there. Just get out of the J S completely, because that stable individually, those guys are good, except for uh 2.0 or whatever they call themselves, K okay, Daddy Magic or whatever. Those dudes are trash, man. I'm sorry, man. That's so annoying. I know that's a part of the gimmick, but goddamn. Um Anna J. Uh Julia Hart. I don't know. I don't know why she's getting pushed, man. Julia Hart just isn't a good wrestler to me. I'm sorry. Um Anna J is like far in the head of her. But I can tell you this right now, and I mean this. Julia Hart's gimmick. Julia Hart's gimmick is here. Her wrestling skills are here. When those two things meet, if she stays in that gimmick that long, it's gonna be awesome. But man, it's her gimmick so so far ahead of her wrestling abilities. Like, I really thought Anna J was gonna win that match, but that gimmick 
is way better than either one of those, what either one of those women have going on right now. And by the way, the match was mid, so that's what I'm grading at. Um, then we had House of Black versus Bandito and Best Friends. Um, I could arguably say, as far as aesthetics, as far as aesthetics, the House of Black is the most aesthetically pleasing team and stable in professional wrestling. The whole packaging is just awesome. Like, the entrance is awesome. The way they look is awesome. All three of all three of those guys are elite level talent. Um, and this match was a um, I forgot what it was called, a House of Black match or something like that. That the aesthetics of the match and how they had the rain, arena lit it had um the Titan Tron showing like the uh the little bubble effects like they saw stream yard or whatever. That was awesome. Um, best friends. I don't care if I piss a lot of people off. I've never liked best friends. I've never liked best friends, uh, specifically Chuck Taylor. I'm sorry. I've just never been into it. I like Orange Cassidy. I like um, I like Trent. Bandito, uh, Bandito, I don't even think he's a part of the group, but I love Bandito. But, like, best friends, meh. So uh, I'm not surprised that they lost the match. Um, it's a lot of good performance in there, but this match was absolute fire. And then we had the main event. All right, let's get in on this main event here. John Moxley, Kenny Omega. The match was fire. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I seen Don Callis. Okay, let me tell you. Let let me tell you guys my logic. Whenever you have a Paul Heyman or a Don Callis in like some type of face roll or Siding with a goddess of face, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be too long before he's stabbing him in the back. And I mean, I seen it with Paul Heyman when CM Punk was a face. I seen it. I've seen. I seen it with, uh, yesterday or, or this afternoon with Kitty Omega and Don Callis. But I seen it from a mile away. I'm honestly surprised that it took this long because Don Callis is a scumbag, just like Paul Heyman is a scumbag. Like as far as like their character, even though hey, they may be scumbags in real life. Uh, but um I seen this coming from a mile away. It was super predictable. Um I didn't necessarily know it was gonna happen in this match, but then like anytime he was ringside, I was like, How is he gonna screw over Kenny Omega? And I guess the answer was stab him in the freaking face with a screwdriver. So yeah, I mean, that's how it went. Um uh, I have no clue what this is going to lead to. Um, um, I don't know. I've probably called. I think I'm pretty sure I called Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. Like, that's going to happen all the time. Who doesn't screw that up? Brian Danielson, basically, he was saying, like, hey, I don't know. He was going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. If he's not a part of, like, the whole thing with the Blackpool Combat Club, then I don't know what the hell he's going to do because, obviously, you're not going to get a Don Callis versus Kenny Omega match. I don't know what they're doing. AEW, I'm going to tell you this about AEW in general. And then I'm going to I'm going to talk on another point real quick. AEW does not have, know how to book shows. And I know it's like, what the F do I know? I'm just a, a fan sitting here um, on YouTube or whatever, just talking to you about wrestling. I get it. But... Let's be honest. I'm probably been watching wrestling as long as the person who's been booking these shows. I'm talking about Tony Khan. I've been watching it probably as long as him or longer. So what I will tell you is that he's not booking these shows right. And any fan can see it. And that's not me shitting on AEW. That's just me being honest. Um, AEW, they have so many wrestlers with so much potential. So many, so many, like, storylines you could tell but i think it's honestly a case of too many cooks in the kitchen i know a big thing with wwe is like guys wanting creative control well guess what if you give too many people too much creative control you're gonna have a show that's always out of sorts so aw if we're talking match to match stacking the matches up 
WWE, AEW, AEW is always going to beat WWE when it comes to matches, when it comes to storytelling, organizing the show, uh, having things feel, having shit feel structured. WWE is light years ahead of AEW, and if you got a problem with that, you could talk to it. You could talk it in the comments, but uh, that's where I'm at on that. Uh, so pretty much. That's this episode's of Fire Made of Trash. I'll see you guys when I do SmackDown's Fire Made of Trash. And I enjoy talking to you. Like, subscribe, comment, turn on your notifications to help out with the algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time for Fire Made of Trash. Hopefully I didn't say Hot Made of Trash this episode. I'm getting better and better, guys. And you're right there with me. I'm MFGDs. And that's it. We're out.